Hi, this is 16.2 iterated integrals. So we want to take our, what we were calling a double integral and represent it as an iterative inter integral. And so if we have R and a rectangle for our base and F is a continuous function on R, then the integral of F over R exists and is equal to the iterated integral. So we're going to have one piece here, which is in Y, and one piece here, which is in X. And so it's kind of similar when we did second order derivatives. We just fix one and move on with the other one. But here, what we're going to do is calculate this first and then plug it into the overall integral to work it out. Okay? So this is how we write it in a very simple form. Suppose we have a building that has a flat roof. 20 meters at its highest point and then 15 meters high at its two adjacent corners of the roof. The base is 10 meters by 15 meters. Find the volume of the building. So I have a picture here and so what we have is this back edge which is 20 and then the two adjacent sides we said were 15 meters high and 15 meters high. By the way this is not exactly what I'm talking about but it's kind of the slanted roof um, that I have going on there. And then this one would be 15 and this one would be 10. I think that's all the dimensions that we need. This one I don't ha have, but I'm not sure that I do need that. So if I want to write the equation of this top plane that we do have, this roof, what I can do is consider that this back corner right here is on the z-axis. And so this would be my 0, 0 here. And so then the height would be 20. So my at time 0, I have 20. And so if I want to write an equation for this, I can start with 20, and then I want to do a slope in the x direction and a slope in the y direction. So I'm going to call this x, and I'm going to call this y. So if I do the change in z with respect to the change in y, it's going to be the slope of this line right here. So in the y direction, I'm going to have a slope of negative one-third. If I do the same thing in the x direction, Oh, no, z and x. My z change here is going to be going down by 5 as well, and then I'm going to have a 10. So this would be negative 1 half. So I can set this up by going 1 half in the x direction and then 1 third in the y direction. So that would be an equation for my plane, which includes the roof. So now my volume can be represented by the integral over my region R of my 20 minus 1 half X minus 1 third Y. And that would be times my little pieces of area that I was talking about before. Now if I want to write this as a double integral, what I'll do then is I'll say that this is going to be, what do my X's run from? Or my Y's, which one do you want to do first might be the question. So if I just choose the x, then I want the limit of my x's, and what do my x's travel from? Well, they're going to go from 0 to 10, because it's in this direction, that's what they're going to go in. Then my y's are going to go from 0 to 15. So notice that these are my y's here, and then these are my x's. And you probably want to write those out just so that you're clear. So this piece right here has to be all in X, and then once I do fi figure this out, then I put it with respect to Y with these limits on the integrals. Now, I don't think I left you enough room, but what I want to do now is take this antiderivative and work with this first piece. So I'm going to have, and it says DX. So this is a constant, so I'm just going to get an antiderivative of 20X. This one is in X, so it's going to be X squared over 2. So I'm going to get x squared over 4. And then this one is in y, so it's like a constant. So that's just going to go along for the ride. And I'm just going to tag on the x after that. Now this part is going to be from 0 to 10. So this is just for this very first part. I plug those values in. And I plug these values. Remember, these are x's. So it's going to go in for the x here, so that's why I still have 10 thirds y. 
So that's my new expression, and I'm going to take the limits of integration with the y now and put this inside of that. So then this piece I just treat like a normal integral that I've done before, and I'm going to get 2250 when I do that part. So that's how you calculate the double integral. Start with the inside and just do it with respect to whichever variable you're talking about. Fix the other one like a constant and work with it from there. Now this one says that we can reverse the limits around and it should turn out to be the same thing. So here, if C and D are on Y and A and B are on X, then I can write the iterated integral this way or I can write it this way. They should be equivalent. So if I flip this around and try this, this is now going to be my X's and these are my Y's. Try this for yourself, do this piece first, and then go ahead and do the other piece. So I worked this one out, uh, doing y first and then x second, and this is what happens when I do it by y, and then I put it into the integral for x, and then I get the same exact answer. So it works both ways, and so that confirm, confirms this order of operations. Now we do have something here It says the limits on integrated integrals. The limits on the outer integrals must always be constants. And then the limits on the integral can involve only one of the variables on the outer integral. So what does this mean? Well, eventually, if you have to do it in terms of y, then the limits can be y on the inside one because you're going to you know, work with the y eventually. So here it says, if the integral is with respect to x, its limits can be a function of y. So that's what it's saying. Okay, so let's try some of these. Example one and two are the same, but we just reverse the order of the limits. And so you'll try two once I get done with one and see if it's the same. So I start with this inside, and I'm going to take the antiderivative here. So I'm going to do it with respect to y. So I see a y there. This x squared is like a constant, so it's going to be y squared over 2. So it's going to be x squared and then y squared over 2. And we're going to evaluate that one from 0 to 2. And then these limits right here, make sure that you understand that since this is a y, this is y equal to. So I'm going to just plug in for the y. So I plug in the 2, and I'm going to get 2x squared. And I plug in the 0, and I'm going to get 0. Now uh, we take this one and rewrite it. So I'm going to write it as 0 to 1 of my 2x squared. Notice everything's in x now, which works out for us. And so if I do this one, I'm going to go up here. This would be 2x to the third over 3, and we're going from 0 to 1. So then this is just going to be equal to 2 thirds. Go try this one. Same exact thing, but reverse, and we should get the same answer. Sure enough, we do this inside first, we get y over 3, plug that in to the exterior one, and we're going to get 2 thirds. Same, same. Nice. All right, now example 3 is a little bit different because now we have the variable limits that we were talking about, and it also says draw a picture to represent the region of integration. So this is going to be a little bit different than what we did in the previous course where you drew what you are finding the area of, well, we're finding the base of where we're going to build the area out of to get the volume. So then realize that this is dx, so this is x equal to y and x equal to 2y. So I've graphed both of them here, x equal to 2y, which is y equal to 1 half x, and then also y equal to x. And with that, that's part of my region, and then I, I have this here, 1 to 3. Now, what is that that's 1 to 3? Well, here, my outside integral here is going to be y. So this is y equal to 1 and y equal to 3. So here's my y equal to 1 here, and here's my y equal to 3 here. So this is the region that I'm talking about that I'm going to be integrating over. So that's the picture that I want to deal with. So you kind of do the linear stuff here, and then you go with the y equal, you know, straight across lines for that one. Horizontal lines, we call them. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and try this. So if this one says do it with respect to x, so it's x cubed over 3y, 
and I'm going from y to 2y. Plug both of those in. And I'm going to get 7y to the fourth all over 3. Now I'm not done, so I want to use my outside limits. Sorry, I've got to go over here, so I'm going to go from 1 to 3 of 7y to the fourth all over 3 dy. Make, make sure that ma makes sense, and it does with this right here. And then so I'm going to end up with 7y to the fifth all over 15. And this is going to go from 1 to 3. So we end up with this value right here, 112.9333. Now the question is, is what does this thing mean? Well, since we're doing dx first, we're taking our cuts in the... So with the outside dy, that means that my cuts are going to run from 1 to 3. So we do know that. And so to get those to run from 1 to 3, I'm going to start and have horizontal cuts going up as I go. So that's what the picture looks like. And then they're going to span from x equal to y to x equal to 2y, or reverse, really, of that. Okay, so then these are the lengths of those cuts. So that's the base of the region that we're talking about. What if we wanted to switch this around? Well, to switch this around, you could do your cuts this way, but then how many different integrals would I need to do that? Well, this would be one situation in here, and then I would get a, another situation in here, and then I would get a third situation down to here. I went too far there. And so you'd have to have three different integrals to set that up and add them together, or double integrals. So example number four, let's look at this one. Uh, this says, take this integral, and so we're going to be doing the multiple integral over some region of f dA. So f is some function. We don't know what that function is, and we're just going to leave it as f, but we want to write it as a uh, this should be iterated integral for the shaded region R. So what we want to do then is figure out, okay, make our cuts. Which way are we going to make our cuts? If we make them up and down like this, notice that I'm going to have two different uh, dimensions on those cuts for what I'm going to be doing. So what I prefer to do then is to go across. So I'm going to be making a cut across like this. So I need equations of these uh, different pieces, this would be y equal to 2x, so it's just a linear equation through 0, 0. And then this one is a line, and we're going to have a slope of negative 3, so then the equation of this one would be y equals negative 3x, and since I go through here at 5, I'm going to go through way up here at 15. So that would be the equation of those two lines, and so that's what I'm going to be running between. Notice that this cut then is going to start at y equal to 0 and go all the way up to y equal to 6. So then the y's are going to be my outside function that I'm going to be dealing with. And I can say that now this is going to be 0 to 6. Then my inside is going to be the x. And then what are the values of x? in terms of y that I'm going to be dealing with. And so that's my problem right now, is that these are y in terms of x. So when I see this dx, yeah, these limits have to be in terms of y. So eventually I get to y, so I can use this here. So solve for x in both of those. So my limits now on this one is going to be the lower limit and then upper limit for that. So I got y over 2. And then this would be... Let's put that negative away a little bit. So this is 15 minus y all over 3, which is the same thing as this right here. And then my function is going to be that particular f function that they've given me. So this would be the way to write the iterated integral for this base region here. And then any kind of heights that you get out of that to give you your third dimension would be that equation that you do have. If the height was 1, well, then you would just be finding the area of this triangle right here because height of 1 just gives you the same thing as that area. So you can look at that too. All right. I hope you understood this, and I hope you did well with this. And in 16.2, your gift is number 1 through 47 odd and 5160. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.